Hi, I'm Julia and this is my shed. So we're um, looking at the Britannia cylinders today. Now uh, a friend of mine, John Bagley, uh, has done quite a bit of work on these cylinders, not these particular ones, but model works design cylinders in the past. And he's got a really good website. It's very good. He goes into a lot of detail on all the jobs he does so you can learn a lot. I certainly have. Um, so what I want to do is is to th these cylinders are, are renowned for not being very good. Uh, the gas flow on them is very poor uh, out the factory. So um, what I want to do is sh strip down one of these to see if it's had any remedial work done to it. Um, if it has, happy days. Otherwise, um, we'll probably make need to make some mods. Excuse the noise, I've got my diesel heater on today. So I think it's good news actually. Um, I'm just looking at these um, these end caps and they look like they're made out of peak. Um, there's nothing to actually hold them in place. So we probably need to add in some washers just to hold, to hold them. The, um, so peak is a, is a filled PTFE so it's a bit more dimensionally stable um, but it does still expand a bit with temperature but it has a very low um, friction coefficient and quite it's quite stable in it holding its shape so it's quite good for valve uh, bobbins uh, somebody's added um, some oil grooves as well just to help it seal so what I've done is um, I've measured the bore of the, the valve uh, body uh, and that's um, that came out as 22.2 and then I've measured the diameter of these and they're at 0.2 below 22 so 19.98 um, so I think that's that, that just gives a bit of um, space for the peak to expand it, it, it's not as bad as standard PTFE, the white stuff, but it does still expand a little bit. Um, so that would explain why there's a bit of blow-by from the valves when I'm running it on air, which was my main worry. Okay, so I've spoken to John. Um, he suggested these might be screwed on and he was right, <laughs> as he always is. Um, he wasn't sure about what this material was. I thought it was peak, but it might be graphite filled PTFE. So it feels quite stable. You can't really put a dent in it with your finger very easily. But what he did say was is that when he uses PTFE for valve heads, it makes them about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Um, and these are obviously quite a lot thicker. Um, so if you make them a sixteenth, they don't expand too much, and then you can make them a nice sliding fit. Then you don't get any blow by. So I'm obviously getting a lot of blow by with these because they're not warm enough. So I think what I might do is um, I'm a bit loath to get rid of these really if if the other dimensions are correct. So I'm gonna um, put them in some hot water and then just see how well they seal. And if they're sealing nicely. You know when they're hot, then I think I'll I will use these. But I, what I will do is is modify this so that I can use um, John's um, way of adjusting. I've just boiled this uh, water that in the mug. So what I'm going to do is just uh, pop the bobbin in there uh, and give it five minutes to. Uh, I'll lay it down so it's got a decent coverage. I'll lay it down 
um, I'll give that five minutes just to heat soak through uh, and then I'll uh, just see how tight a fit it is in the valve bore. Okay, so it's actually, they're actually quite tight now. Um, they are cooling down, obviously. But th that is quite firm. There is definitely a seal there. So I think that, that would probably do. I think that would work. So this is John's design um, for easy adjusting uh, bobbins. So what we have is a, a long uh, sleeve bolt which is threaded M5, which mat matches the, uh, the valve rod. Uh, and then you have a hole in the bobbin that's uh, a loose fit on, on this outer diameter. So it has some, some ability to float. And then you tighten it up with a, a nut on the end, just tight enough so there's no lateral movement, but it can move side to side slightly in the bore. Um, and then you can just adjust it by rotating this, this nut and that will move things up and down the, the valve rod and have a lock nut. Um, for, for, because we've these are just screw on, uh, I want a, a washer to just hold, hold those in position. So um, I've done a quick sketch. I'm going to make some washers for each end which are 15mm diameter. Uh, 8.5mm. Um, I need to bore this hole out to 8.5mm. The bolt itself, the sleeve bolt, will be 8mm on the outside diameter. So we've got half a mil clearance there, which is the same as this on the, com the current valve thread, the current valve rod. This will have an M5 thread inside. I'm not sure whether to thread it all the way through because that's quite a long long thing. So I might counter bore it. Um, we need to make it a bit longer so we can put some the washers and lock lock nut the lock nut on as well. Uh, this will have a hex head so that's a rough idea. I found I found some uh, some brass to make the bolts out of. That's eleven mil across flats. Which is a good sort of looks about right to me. So uh, yeah, so we'll make the I found uh, some fifteen mil brass for the washers. So we'll make washers first. I don't want them to be too big, otherwise this bolt will get too long. So I think um, try and go for about one point five mil. So um, I'm trying out a different camera angle for my lathe work. Um, let me know what you think. So it's obviously a, t a top down view rather than an end view. So you can you get a bit more of a operator's eye view of what's going on. So I uh, hope, hope you find that a bit better. Let me know what you think. So now we're moving on to, to making the sleeve bolts what I'm calling them. <laughs> so we, we this is hex bar and um, so we, we bring it down to size first. The final job is to do make the M5 um, thread or tap the M5 thread um, in the, the sleeve bolt. This is making the um, nuts which will hold the, that will go on the end of the sleeve bolt to hold the bobbin in place. The final job on the sleeve bolts is to 
countable with the M5 clearance because um, obviously we couldn't thread all the way down so we've uh, just got in as far as we can go so that's the uh, modified um, bobbins so if the original ones are as made basically except um, I've got an eight and a half mil hole through there and that basically allows the bobbin to float sideways on this tubular nut I guess we could call it rather than a, or a sleeve bolt and then we've got washers at each end a lock nut and we'll just tighten that up until we can't there's no discernible side to side play but it can obviously move up and down a little bit so it self centers and then um, and you, as you can see it, it, it goes in quite a way before the thread starts the thread starts about here it's only on the very last section that's just really just to just because my <laughs> The threading equipment only goes uh, that deep and that's plenty deep enough so that, sh that should do and there's no there's no wobble on the thread because it's um quite it's it's only drilled out uh five mil and it's an m5 thread so it's it's not a slack fit on on the, on this end even though it's not threaded so uh, yeah so i think that that those are good enough now to give a, give them a go in the loco. So we'll start reassembling the um, cylinder assemblies and uh, get them on the loco. I think that's the next thing. So um, yeah, I hope hope you found this um, interesting. Obviously, the idea is nicked from John Bagley, and all credit to him and his really good website. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a link in in the, the bottom here. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful, interesting, entertaining. Uh, like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.